All right, so this is ultimately what we are creating. Um, I don't have a way to get my phone any closer to my computer. My laptop's in the way, so bear with me. So I do everything in Silhouette mm -hmm. Studio. Um, I do everything in Silhouette Studio Business Edition, make everything how I want it to be, and I have a Cricut. I don't have a Silhouette, so... I have to import it into Design Space. Oy. Let's get rid of that. Oh. Wasn't fully prepared. 1030 snuck up on me. All right, so the first thing I do is I just open a blank screen in Silhouette Studio. I make the mat that I have to work with the size of whatever my um, oh, brain fart, whatever my whatever size my acrylic is. So the size acrylic that I'm using is an 11 by 14, and I just put it however um, the picture is. So this picture just happens to be landscape picture so in my first layer I'll bring in the actual picture and then I don't need this anymore so I can close this and then I will size my picture to what I need it to be and I had to mess with this earlier today because it was just not working for me. So I kind of already know what I'm doing. Get your picture to how you want it to be. Make sure that it is selected. And then we are going to want to make it grayscale all the way to the right. <clears throat> now I learned all these techniques from Kay Hall and Clever Someday. Um, her stuff is just amazing as far as resources for engraving with the Cricut. Um, hit apply so it stays gray. Go over to the inversion and completely invert it. Hit apply. And then close that. And for whatever reason, it puts this line straight down the center of my picture but I found that if I just click back once, it leaves the inversion effect, but it doesn't, um, it gets rid of that line. So then this has a bunch of, um, this has a bunch of like lights and darks and things like that. My face and my husband's face are not the exact same. So kind of what I had to mess around with today, um, I'm, I think I'm making this a total of nine layers. The biggest I've done so far is like five layers, but this one's going to be nine layers and I'm just spacing the lines a little bit further apart so this way it doesn't white everything out. So what you want to do, if my silhouette cooperates with me, sometimes I have to close my layers panel and open it back up because it doesn't give me the plus sign at the bottom. I make a bunch of extra layers, um, so this way when I pull it into Cricut, I can engrave them in separate layers instead of it being one big huge jumbled thing. Because Cricut does this thing, it's called throttling, that when you engrave something bigger than one megabyte, it, oh, the last one that I did that was 11 by 14, one of my layers was bigger than a megabyte, and it legitimately took me three days. So. I try not to do that and I try to check the size of it, but I don't always remember to, but this one I needed to get a lot more detail. So we just, I went ahead and I made a whole crap ton of, of layers. So I know that I need 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, oop, shit, oop, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90. So I'll go through here and I name them 
for what threshold I'm going to use when I trace. Because this way, I remember which one I'm on. If my mouse would cooperate with me, that would be fantastic. So I don't know if you guys can see that, but I have all these different layers. All right. So now what you want to do is you want to go through each layer, make sure you click on it. Otherwise it'll save wherever you're already clicked into and I'm engraving this on the front. I'm not engraving this on the back. I'm engraving it on the front because I'm going to put dark behind it so that way it shows through because it's going into a shadow box. Um, this, if it was going into like an LED light base or if it was um, going really into anything with light, I would flip the picture so it was backwards. So this way it engraved on the back of the acrylic, but I don't need to do that. I'm going to engrave on the front because I'm going to put something dark behind it. I haven't decided if I'm just going to put like dark vinyl or paper or something. I haven't quite decided yet. So you want to select trace, put it over your whole image, and change your threshold, which is this little guy right there. I change it to match what that layer is. Again, that's why I have it as a reminder. And you'll just do that for each layer. It makes it look real creepy towards the end because there's just red and black and it's just going to trace off of each layer. All right, once you get it all traced, you can close out your trace box, and then go down to the photo layer and turn it off. 